Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. AMD's Ryzen 7000 series of processors will obviously totally dominate its Zen 3 powered predecessors. But how will AMD achieve lofty performance targets? We know that the IPC gains of Zen 4 are said to be around 20 to 25 percent, which is impressive, particularly when you have clock frequencies which are also boosted thrown on top. But perhaps one of the coolest pieces of technology from Team Red over the past few years has been the 3D V-cache chiplets we've seen in the 5800X3D. Will these return for Zen 4, particularly when we've seen the huge performance boost they've given for Zen 3. Well, we're going to get right into that after this message from the video's sponsor. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional as well as Home Keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. I think most would agree that the 5800X3D is an excellent way for users who don't want to necessarily jump onto the AM5 platform to upgrade to an excellent gaming rig. Sure, the prices for just an 8-core processor are kind of high, but it's hard to argue with the performance results that we've been seeing. And the Vcache technology also has a ton of other uses, for example, in servers. But again, with the IPC gains we're seeing here, it would help negate some of the IPC improvements we're seeing with Zen 5, even with the clock frequencies added on. Ryzen 7000 is going to retain the same core counts as what we have with Zen 3. So, for example, 16 cores, 12 cores, and so on and so on but we'll obviously make use of an entirely new platform with DDR5, PCIe Gen 5, and so on and so on, and with a host of architecture improvements. The best way of describing Zen 4, perhaps in a succinct manner, would be Zen 3, but just more of everything, more L2 cache, improvements to the front and back end of the CPU, and so on. I actually put out a recent video discussing some of the uh, architecture improvements on Zen 4, so I'll link it in the video description. But will the 3D Vcache chip that's return for Zen 4? My own personal sources have told me that yes will be the answer, and I actually have been hearing it was the 170 watt TDP variant, which appear to only be the 16 core, but quite honestly, since the CPUs haven't actually released yet, you can always get some conflicting information. Rather interestingly, Grayman on Twitter, just today, actually posted that yes, Zen 4 will definitely be receiving the Vcache treatment. What isn't so clear, at least right now, is whether this is going to be for launch. Personally speaking, I've heard from more sources that it's going to be later on that we're going to see the Vcache variants. Basically, it's just additional ammo, if you will, against Intel. Personally, I've been hearing that around 5 GHz is the all-core speed for the Ryzen 7000 series, and around 5.2 is probably the speed that we're going to be seeing for single thread. Although, of course, there are a number of caveats there. The first and most obvious one is which SKU are we referring to? And the second is that, well, you know, boosting and Zen are kind of a more complicated topic at any rate. And actually something very interesting that AMD themselves have somewhat hinted slash confirmed, I'll leave a link to the WCCF tech article for this one. And it basically concerns memory overclocking. So obviously we're seeing the switch from DDR4 to DDR5 with now Intel as well as upcoming AMD. And it allows, of course, much higher memory frequencies. And I'm going to read this verbatim. Our first DDR5 platform for gaming is our Raphael platform. And one of the awesome things about Raphael is that we're really going to try to make a big splash with overclocking. I'll just kind of leave it there, but speeds that you thought wouldn't be possible, may be possible with this overclocking spec." End quote. And it's a very interesting one because 
I've also been hearing that various APUs, I'm actually working on a video regarding AMD's APUs, it should be out in the next few days, will also see pretty impressive memory overclocking functionality and possibly as well the iGPU for the APUs. And of course it gets a little kind of confusing with um, discussions of APUs with uh, AM5 because technically speaking we will see four CUs anyway basically built in for an iGPU but uh, to be clear I'm referring to things like Phoenix. Also let's quickly switch gears to Intel's Raptor Lake aka the 13th generation of processors. More recently, Intel launched the 12900KS, where they basically just took 12900K and cranked the clock frequency up to, well, the stratosphere, as well as the power consumption as well. Raptor Lake will improve various aspects of the architecture. I'm hearing around a 8 to 10% IPC gain, although, as usual, it depends, of course, what application you're running and all of that jazz. And we've also seen official benchmarks at this point, which hint the core count, and it pretty much matches what myself and various other leakers were stating. So we're going to see up to 24 cores, 32 threads, because of the increase in the number of energy-efficient cores. But what's quite interesting is one, Raichu has had a pretty good track record on Twitter. I'll, of course, leave a link to their account in the video description. Has stated that we're actually going to see higher clock frequencies, perhaps an additional two to 300 megahertz on top of what we already have with the 12900KS, which could mean one core speed anyway is way over 5.7, 5.8 gigahertz. I mean, this is not including overclocking, so if you've got something like a custom water loop or, you know, you're willing to put enough juice into the thing, we could potentially be seeing some insane overclocking records. And yeah, I don't think, though, that Raptor Lake is going to take the single thread crown. I'm actually thinking it could be this weird role reversal with AMD and Intel. Obviously, at the end of the day, no one's had both systems to do any benchmark comparisons. So this is speculation, and I could be totally and utterly wrong. But personally speaking, I think it's most likely that Intel will take a back seat to Zen 4 when it comes to single thread performance. So I think AMD are probably going to win in terms of single thread, but I suspect Intel, just because of the additional energy efficient cores, the higher clock frequency, plus IPC gains, I mean, sure, Zen 5, uh, sorry, Zen 4 is going to have IPC gains as well, but again, so will Intel, not as drastic though as Zen 4, they will also have a higher clock frequency, much like Zen 4, but Intel are also throwing some energy efficient cores into the mix as well. So I suspect that Intel are probably going to maybe pip um, AMD to the post in multi-core results. Although I suspect it's going to be very much dependent upon the application as always. Game results though will be really curious. I'm perhaps expecting AMD to maybe take the lead in gaming. I'm hearing that that's probably expected. But I suspect that Intel will try to push, you know, other applications, content creation, that type of thing. It'll be really interesting, though, to see how all of this plays out. And my guess, going back to the initial kind of story that we spoke about, this is possibly one of the reasons that AMD will release the Vcash variant in the future. It'll be really interesting also to see how the core wars play out, because just from a marketing perspective... Intel will have more cores, quote unquote. It becomes a little tricky because you can say, yeah, but they're only energy efficient cores and others will say, yeah, but it's still more cores. And it's gonna be really interesting to see, let's say an eight core Zen 4 versus whatever configuration that we're gonna see from Intel at roughly the same price point. It's gonna be a very, very curious year in technology. Uh, before I let you all go, just a quick thing. There will be an interview actually popped up on the channel over the next several days. I'm not quite sure when it will go live. It's pretty lengthy. It's about 90-ish minutes from memory. And that is with the Kronos group. We actually talked about a lot of stuff there. Uh, Vulcan obviously was heavily discussed along with OpenCL. But a lot more besides. So if you're interested in things like machine learning, the metaverse, virtual reality, games consoles, pretty much everything is talked about 
then it could be an interview that you are um, sorry that you are wanting to watch. With that said, I am going to let you all go. Take care of yourself. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.